Hmm. Oh! Didn't notice you guys finding me here instead of back home. Hi, I'm Dronius, and welcome back to the channel. I thought it would be nice to take some time away from the house and just go shopping for a little bit. Ah, Jesus! What is this? There doesn't seem to be a destination on the other side. Not to mention that it's bright as fuck. I'm gonna be called an idiot for running away, but screw it. I'll see where this takes me. Aw, uh, what the f- In the entertainment world, a franchise will always get various adaptations of the source material when it becomes popular. Video games getting movies? I mean, in most cases it sucks ass, but on rare occasions it's possible to make it work. Comic books getting adapted into cartoons? Sure, sign me up. Anime shows getting the live action Netflix treatment? Don't let your kids watch it! But the topic I want to focus on falls under the category of video games getting the comic book slash manga tie-in treatment. These books are made with the sole purpose of advertising the games they're based on, but most of them also manage to be entertaining in their own right. So even if you never plan on buying these games, you can still enjoy these books for whatever retail price it's worth. And the manga I want to talk about for the rest of this video is based on Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm stuck on this island and this room seems to be the only safe place, so if someone's watching this, please send help. Animal Crossing New Horizons Deserted Island Diary, god that's a mouthful, is a children's manga adaptation of Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch, a game that made the franchise rise more into popularity during the rise of the pandemic back in 2020. In previous entries, you play as a villager who moves into an established town or village inhabited by anthropomorphic animals, where the main goal at the start is to save bells, this game's currency, to pay off the mortgage on the player's home from Tom Nook. This requires collecting natural materials like ores, bugs, and fish to sell them. Once you pay off your mortgage, you can then engage in everyday life by interacting with animals living alongside you, participating in holiday activities and events, and contributing to the development of your town slash village. However, starting in New Horizons, the aforementioned Tom Nook takes on a huge role by becoming a travel agent and acting as the founder of Nook Incorporated. Through his company, the player purchases a getaway package to a deserted island, where it's your job to build a community from the ground up. Now, the average viewer who already knows this series might be wondering, why are you telling me this basic premise of an Animal Crossing game if I already know about this information? Well, that's because our four protagonists for this adventure are some of the most incompetent motherfuckers I have ever seen in fiction. And for the context of this manga, I love it. For the short period of a real player progressing through the game, these villagers can't do jack shit. Our four warriors of light consist of Koryuki, the leader of the group who's always taking the initiative on what they should all do, resulting in the worst decisions possible. There's Ben Ben, the smart one, that comes up with ideas to solve problems in a comedic way. Hime Poyo is the one friend that thinks extremely highly of herself. Getting others to do things for her, taking photos for her one Instagram follower that I assume is her mom, you know, that's pretty damn relatable. You know, the kind of stuck-up royalty behavior most people wouldn't stand for. And finally, there's Gu-chan. This man lives and breathes getting some sleep. He talks in snot bubbles, always sleeping in the most strange places, it's insane. Together, these guys embark on an island vacation where they meet Tom Nook and learn about the deserted island getaway package, which was way more than they had bargained for. And these knuckleheads are not what our Tanuki fellow was expecting either. Their antics are often absurd and you might find yourself starting to feel a little bit bad for Nook. The man's just trying to do his job and these guys are what's gonna make his life a living hell. For the plot, it somewhat feels like an episodic narrative while also having the island slowly being developed over time. Each volume has multiple chapters that serves as its own contained story. And it's interesting to see how things play out throughout the series because you assume these kids would learn from their mistakes by taking one step forward, only for them to take five steps back in the most unpredicted way imagined. Several characters from New Horizons are introduced in this manga, like Blathers, Wisps, and Raymond. And each of the chapters dedicated to them or the many main features of the original game is sillier than the last. The overall storyline does stick to the basic premise of New Horizons, you know, landing on the island, getting your tent, to learning how to use DIY recipes, starting the museum, you know, all that stuff. However, it's implied that the shit that these villagers do brings on restrictions on what can be donated to the museum or how things can be crafted. Similarly, the art style stays true to the game, with some panels having a simple looking line work and a chibi look, while adding that specific manga aesthetic in some areas. These also apply to the gags which I think works well. Humor is subjective at the end of the day, and in the case of Deserted Island Diary, it's geared towards the elementary slash middle school age demographic. However, adults that also enjoy these games will likely chuckle at the antics of the characters. In one scene in volume 1, Koryuki and crew try to catch a big monster fish as a get rich quick scheme by using a large fishing net. 
During this endeavor, they ended up catching Gulliver who is in distress and needs help of getting back to his crewmates, just like in New Horizons. When the villagers need to find all five communicator parts to repair the seagull's phone to make a call, Gulliver takes off to god knows where. So instead of getting off their asses and going looking for him, the best idea these goofy goobers had was to imitate the seagull's distress call pose and just lie on the beach. These are just many of the silly gags this manga has across the series. And if that's something you're not into, then these books aren't for you. But I love this stuff, as each chapter always has something that'll make me laugh quietly like a Japanese schoolgirl. It brings so much charm to an already peaceful franchise that's always a joy to read through. And as long as you're not setting yourself up with high standards or severe depression afterward, then Animal Crossing New Horizons Deserted Island Diary is a must read from me. I recommend giving it a shot when you have the chance. As of this video, you can pick up the first three volumes in English on Amazon, while Volume 4 is only available in Japan and Singapore, and Volume 5 recently released in Japanese, so that's the only language that's available for that cover. So that's pretty much all I have to say on this great manga. That being said, I'm not sure how to get back home. Whoa! Wait, that's the same light from before! Maybe that'll lead me out of this strange place. Sweet home! Hmm, that felt like an acid trip, but I made it back in one piece, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Although I don't want to experience that again. Hmm? Wait, wh where's that beeping coming from? Oh, fuck! Wait, I can explain, I can explain!